Hello and welcome to this Rebound YouTube tutorial. My name is Hanno Rein and today I'll talk to you about the integrators that are built into Rebound. Now let's start off with what actually is an integrator. An integrator is an algorithm that provides a numerical approximation to the solution of ordinary differential equations. In our case, the differential equations are simply the equations of motion that we're solving. So f equals m times a, where f is mostly gravity and maybe some other forces that get added on. So the solution to those equations is always an approximation. This is the purpose of rebound, to provide you with approximations to this differential equation. Now rebound gives you the option to choose between many different integrators that come built in. And sometimes it can be hard to choose the right integrator for a given problem. So in this video, I give you some help with how to choose an integrator, but it will only serve as an introduction and there will be future videos where I go into more details for some of those integrators. When choosing an integrator, you want to find a good integrator. But the question is, what actually is a good integrator? And well, the first um, criteria that we have is that the approximation that we get from an integrator should be close to the true solution. The second criteria is that the algorithm is fast. Measuring whether an algorithm is fast or not is straightforward. You just measure the runtime for different integrators and you can find out which one is faster. However, it's not clear how to satisfy the first criteria in the best possible way. And therefore, in general, a, the best integrator might just not exist. It really depends on how you define what you mean by a solution that is close to the true solution. This can mean something like you want to um, have the position error of planets after a given time as small as possible. It could also mean that you want the energy error that you accumulate in your simulation to be as small as possible after billions of orbits. So it really depends on the problem. It can also depend a lot on your specific setup. There might be an integrator that is very good if you use small time steps but it might fail if you use larger time steps. Similarly, some integrators might be better if you have many particles or if you have very few particles. So there is no general answer to what is the best integrator. One of the key applications for rebound is to solve the differential equations for planetary orbits when we deal with planetary systems. And there is something special going on in planetary systems. The key feature here is that the gravitational force can be split into one, a dominant part, coming from the central object, the central star, and two, perturbations on top of that dominant part, mostly coming from other planets. This feature is not unique to planetary systems. It can also occur on a smaller or on a larger scale. For example, if you consider moons orbiting a planet, you have this same hierarchy. Similarly, you can consider stars orbiting the central black hole in our galaxy. Similarly there, the stars might interact with each other, but this, that is a perturbation compared to the, the dominant part of the gravitational force coming from the black hole. Because we have this hierarchy, where there's a dominant part and a perturbation part, you can construct special integrators that make use of that hierarchy. Keep in mind that integrators are there to provide an approximation to the true solution. If we already know a priori what the dominant part is of our force, we can use that to construct a better integrator. Here's a list of integrators that you might want to use to integrate planetary orbits. These are all implemented in Rebound. And given that this is a relatively long list, it might seem intimidating to find out which one to use now. In most cases, you probably want to use WHFAST, which is a wisdom Holman type integrator. The specific implementation is described in Ryan and Tamayo 2015. Or IES15, which is a high order non-symplectic integrator, the 15th order Radau scheme, first implemented by Eberhardt, and the specific implementation that is in Rebound is described in Ryan and Spiegel 2015. Then there might also be Mercurius 
or TES, the Terrestrial Exoplanet Simulator, which is a recent addition to Rebound that you might use for some um, systems with close encounters that the other integrators might not be able to handle. So each of those integrators has some pros and some cons. They're used for different cases where um, those cases vary between the number of particles you use, whether you have close encounters, whether you want to integrate them for a very long time, whether they can easily incorporate non-conservative forces and the several, several other criteria on top of that. In this video, I cannot go into the detail for all the possible options and features. In particular, the first integrated WHFAST comes with a lot of internal options where you can choose symplectic correctors or other kernel modules. If you're interested in that, please have a look at this paper cited here, High Order Symplectic Integrators for Planetary Dynamics and the Implementation in Rebound by Ryan Tamayo and Brown 2019, which describes these high order symplectic methods in great detail. What I want to give you in this video is a few short pointers to which integrator you can use for certain problems. This is by no means a final answer. You might have a case that is somewhere in between the cases I'm listing, or you might find that another integrator just works better in your case. However, in most cases, if you have a planetary system where there's one central object, you're not expecting close encounters between the planets, then use WH fast. I'm saying no close encounters, but that's actually not quite true. If you're interested in the stability of planetary systems, you might have close encounters at the very end when your planetary system goes unstable. In that case, you can still use WH fast. You just cannot trust your approximation anymore after close encounters have occurred. In that case, you just want to stop the simulation when the close encounter occurs and then determine that this simulation went unstable. Now, if you have a planetary system where either you expect close encounters or you have an orbit around a binary star or any complex um, hierarchy of, of planets and stars that is not as simple as the solar system, you might want to use a different integrator, namely IS-15. This is an integrator that works in most cases out of the box without you fine tuning any parameters. It might be significantly slower than WH fast, but in most cases it will give you a very accurate result. So use IS15 when you expect a few close encounters. For example, if you have an asteroid that comes by the Earth and you want to find out how close does it get to the Earth, IS15 would be your, your choice. Now, if you have a planetary system with, once again, one central object and many close encounters, and you're interested in the statistical outcome of these close encounters, then use Mercurius or alternatively the Terrestrial Exoplanet Simulator, TES. In contrast to IS-15, these integrators might be faster, but they might not as accurately resolve individual close encounters. So this is not good if you want to find out if a specific asteroid will hit the Earth. But if you're interested in the statistical number, how many asteroids might come within a certain distance of the Earth, then Mercurius might be the integrator for you to use. There are a few other cases that are more um, specific that um, have other integrators as their first choice. For example, if you just want to have a low order integrator a standard integrator that works for any gravitational system, whether it's a planetary system or a star cluster or something else, just use LeapFrog. LeapFrog is a very well-known standard integrator that you can also use within Rebound. Even if this might not be your integrator of choice for a given problem, you can still use it as a test. And I mentioned that in a bit in this slide. Um, using LeapFrog as a test case gives you a very quick way to find out how much faster is, for example, WH fast than LeapFrog for the same accuracy. There's a specific integrator to use for local shearing sheet simulations. You encounter those um, in Saturn's rings or astrophysical disks in general. Whenever you zoom in to a small part of an astrophysical disk and approximate the central gravity in a linear way, 
you end up with a local sharing sheet approximation. And there's a special integrator in Reban to do that, the symplectic epicycle integrator. It's similar to Leapfrog, but it has the feature that it accurately um, integrates epicycles in the presence of perturbations in disks. And lastly, there is the Bourlish stir integrator. Once again, a very standard integrator. It's a brute force integrator that both has an adaptive time step and it has an adaptive order. So you can integrate any um, ordinary differential integration that you want with this integrator, not just the gravitational um, forces that are typically used for rebound. So if you have user-defined ordinary differential equations that you want to couple with something in rebound, then the Bourlish stir integrator is your choice. So I've given you some starting points. Now let me tell you how you can check whether the integrator that you're using is giving you physically correct results. There are two important checks to do. Number one is just try out a different integrator. Even if the integrator is not as good, you should get some indication of how much worse it is. And if you understand that amount of by how much it is worth, you have a better intuition about how accurate your integrator is. So for example, use Leapfrog to integrate a planetary system. You can make it accurate by reducing the time step and you can still compare results. The number two convergence study is particularly important. You should always do a convergence study in a numerical simulation like those you do with rebound. So what is a conversion study? You want to change the numerical parameters that should have no effect on the physical outcome. In the case of a numerical n-body simulation, the one obvious parameter to change is the time step. So reduce the time step, for example, by a factor of two, ideally by more if you can afford it, and run your simulation again. If the runtime becomes an issue and you just cannot wait, twice as long for your simulation to finish, consider increasing your time step instead. That will be faster by a factor of two. So there's really no excuse to not run a simple conversion study. You can always increase the time step and run it again. When, once you have simulations with different time steps, you can compare the results between those. The results should not change because the numerical time step is a numerical fudge factor that is not present in the real system. So if your results depend on the time step, something is wrong. You either need to use a smaller time step to make sure you're converged or choose a different integrator. There's one important detail here. Many of the systems that you integrate with rebound might be chaotic systems. The solar system is one such example. If you run the solar system, with two different time steps, you might get completely different results out. And this is not a feature of the integrator being not converged. Instead, it's because the system is chaotic and small changes, whether they're numerical or small changes in initial conditions, will lead to exponentially large changes later on. So you cannot compare the position of planets, for example, at the end of a billion year integration to determine whether your, convert, whether your integrator is converged or not. Instead, what you should do is compare statistical results for an entire ensemble of simulations. For example, calculate the fraction of systems that go unstable for a, a, a set of systems with slightly different initial conditions. Then run the same systems again, but with a different time step. On average, the same number of systems should go unstable. However, each individual system might be either stable or unstable. That alone does not determine whether your, um, your simulations are converged. So do these tests on a statistical ensemble if you have a chaotic system. In general, if you can, try not to just run two simulations with two different time steps, but instead run them with many different time steps. Then you can make a plot like this where you plot on the x-axis the time step and on the y-axis the error. If you plot this in a log-log scale, the slope of the line that you get out should correspond to the order of your integrator. Leapfrog, for example, is a second order integrator, so you have a slope of two. What you use on the y-axis as your error metric 
is once again problem specific. There is no universal answer that, that will work in every case, but one error metric that works for conservative systems relatively well is the global energy error. You know that in the real system, energy should be conserved. So you can measure the energy difference between the initial conditions and your final conditions in the n-body simulation. That gives you a metric for how accurate your solution is. The closer to the true solution, the smaller the error. And if you plot this on the y-axis, you typically get a good, um, a good linear or, or a good um, um, linear dependence out um, like this. So do these conversion studies. And this is something that I'd encourage you to put in a paper if you write it up, if at least in the appendix to verify that um, the numerical fudge factors such as the time step do indeed not matter. So if you have any um, more questions about this sort of topic, go and look up the rebound documentation. There is a website that just lists the available integrators and their features. And if you have a specific question about one of those integrators or you're not sure which one to use, you're also very welcome to post an issue on the GitHub repository and either myself or someone else will be happy to help you out and try to find the best integrator for your specific setup. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you in a future video. Goodbye.